Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can bet, the title we're going to be playing a game called The Vermanus Curse. Have you ever tried to do something good for the world only to have that good deed involved into something sinister? Here we meet J.P. Vermander, a ruthless cutthroat businessman who believes he's been swindled by the local hospital. And what does any ruthless businessman do in this situation? Fire them, right? No, he conjures up the power of a demonic curse. He's very determined to have his revenge. Will he succeed in his ritualistic curse? Let's find out. Oh! Damn. What is that? Oh, her name is Han, okay. You want to see me, Mr. Van Manor, sir? <laughs> Why you look like that? Anyway, Hannah, what aren't these months' profits as high as last month? I've been looking over the piece of paper you gave me earlier, and I don't like the numbers on it. I can't, I can't make heads or tails out of that damn thing. They raised the threshold on how much you need to donate in order to get your tax deduction, remember, sir? They did what? What was this? Sir, I've been reminding you about this for the last eight months. But it's actually fine, though. You still end up saving way more money than if you didn't get the dedu deduction so. With the good Lord as my witness, I am being swindled. I would not stand for this. No one gets one over on J.P. Vermander. No, sir. Not now. Not ever. But, sir, now then, where have I been donating all my hard-earned money to again? The hospital, sir. Hospital? Which one? There's only one, there's only one in town, sir. The only hospital in this godforsaken backwater town? I thought you said black. I'm saying, what you supposed to mean by that? But anyway, this backwater town, and then they have the nerve to swindle me out of my money? <laughs> well, I know exactly how to handle this situation like this. Have the ritual, Hannah. And go fetch me my robes. The ritual? But Mr. Vermander, sir, please. This is this is entirely uncalled for. The people in that hospital have been nothing to you. Had done nothing to you, sir. Besides, the difference in profits between this month and last month is only about one percent less, sir. That's nice and all, Hannah. But I don't remember asking. <laughs> now go. You don't have much time to waste. Notify me immediately when everything is ready. Okay, sir. Those good boys are acting right too, yeah. <laughs> I know, that's right. Oh, we mess with demons again. Here we go. Hello? Hello? Anyone home? I hear you. I hear you. Give your gal a minute. Good God Almighty. She thick as hell. Dr. Edda? Ida? Whatever. Yeah? Ah, hello there, Dr. Edda. I presume. That's me. Who's asking? Fantastic. <laughs> I'm more than the nurse who transfer requests you received. Transfer requests? What in the world are you talking about? You aren't aware? You aren't aware? Surely you've read the email concerning me. We don't get no regular internet out here, sonny boy. Only thing we get out here is that old satellite connection. And we ain't got that either. But if you're here to help, then I ain't about to wait, but I ain't about to complain. You got a lot to learn, so you better pay attention, because I'm only saying this once. I'm all ears, Doctor. When patients come in, I write their information down on this here clipboard. Wouldn't it be better to use a computer instead? Didn't she just tell you she ain't had no internet? No. Oops, shit. Hold on. Okay. The waiting rooms over here ain't much to say about it. All the magazines are older than I am, and ain't none of them worth reading nowhere. Oh my. They're like a coffin in there. Y'all saw that? Oh my god. Damn. We got eight rooms. Y'all saw that too, right? Three are company occupied and aren't rest. Wait, what? what I say? I'm already messing up. <laughs> Dr. Langham Board is in over in room 6A. He had a pretty bad back injury, but we fixed him right up. Miss Tammy Giles Gills is in room 2A. She needed one of them teeth pulled, and we ain't got many options for aesthetic either. So I gave her some of that old-fashioned medicine. <laughs> I keep under the sink, if you know what I mean. She'll be a little, she'll be a little dizzy for a while, but everything else went smooth as silk. Impressive. There's a woman, there's a woman over in 1A too. Poor thing cut her hand up real bad on her job. They tried to hide it. Her boss found out and sent her here. I ain't managed to figure out her name. 
So I wrote her down as Jane Doe and passed her up. Ah, mystery. I wonder who she is. We ain't known to me. We ain't known to ask too many questions around here. Mr. Morton, we're here to help. Got it? Understood, doctor. Damn, I can't read it for shit. We got two bathrooms, an operating room, and something like a kitchen. Oh, excellent. The lights in here don't work half the time. We keep our medicine supply in the OR, but most of the bottles are empty because of the budget ain't paying and we fill them. And there ain't nothing over in the fridge, so don't even bother checking. Oh. Does anything in this hospital function as intended? Not really. And that's about it. Let's head back to the front desk so you can get you signed in and start the first shift. What the hell? Wow. That old sign is she's just over there. I can't stop looking at it, okay? <laughs> I suggest you go over, go ahead and start searching for yourself. Because I ain't about to come back looking for it. Understood, doctor. I'll find it. In the meanwhile, I better go make my rounds and check up the patients. <laughs> come and get me if you need something. Or oh, I play as her? Okay. Whoa! Whoa! What is that? Oh. That's her nose. I think. I think that's her nose, right? Okay, we got Lang Boyd, Tammy Gills, Guy or something like that, and Jane Doe. Okay, we got one A. Oh, there she is. Jane Doe. How you doing, dear? Okay. Hand is fine, no? We ain't got nothing to worry about. You ever go back good as new? Good. Thank you. You are most welcome, dear. Try to get some rest and I'll check back in later. Yes. Yes. To a oh oh good God, how you feeling, dear? Hey, Doctor Ada, what are you doing here? Still ain't sobered up yet, huh? <laughs> no, that's fine, dear. At least the tooth ain't bothering you no more. Just give it some time and try to get some rest, okay? Okay. Oh, are you wearing bottoms? The hell? Everything all right in here? I'm fine, doc. Matter of fact, I feel like I could walk out of here right now. Ow! See? He can't even laugh without it hurting him. This is exactly why I said, Lang, baby, please stay off the roof. It's dangerous. We can pay someone else to clean the gutters. Did he listen? No. He waited until I left for work and then tried to get up there himself. A little gust of wind and next thing you know, bam! Straight into the hedges. You know, I could have done it if the wind hadn't picked up. That's not the point. He shouldn't have been up there in the first place. Doctor, can you please get this man something to fix this ter terminal slack of common sense, please? Sorry, honey, but we ain't got nothing to fix that. Now, you two just try to take it easy, all right? I'll be back later on. All right, that's everyone. I better get back to Doc, uh, Mr. Morton. So we checked on all three patients. Why are you looking for me like that? The way it, it, it just took control all of a sudden, it turned me around I'm like, what the hell? That's supposed to be a jump scare. It failed. <laughs> Dr. Edda, the phone starting to ring while you were gone, so I answered it. And? The call won't stop going on about rituals and demons, among other things that I can't understand. I think it may be best if you talk to her. There's always something. You know what the weirdest turn around I've ever seen in my life? It was so slow, too. Honey, honey, slow down. Ain't none of that making sense. Please, you have to get out of there right now. My boss just summoned an actual genuine demon, and now you're in danger. Uh-uh, uh-huh. What do you work for again? J.P. Vermeer, ma'am. Who's that, doctor? He's some rich city boy who moved out here when he's inherited his family's estate. A lot of folks around here have to pay him rent just to call, just because his family owns the land. Yes, that's him exactly. I don't know all the details, but there's a blood pact, and a demon, and a curse, and all kinds of other stuff. You need to leave now. Once the clock strikes ten, you won't be able to leave. Honey, that's less than two minutes. Ain't no way we're getting around out of here that fast. Goodness, I didn't expect the sticks to be this high on my first night. Exactly. But I'm committed at this point. Is there anything we can do to help our situation? I did go snooping into a few old journals to kept by the Vermanders. Based on what I've learned... <clears throat> Based on what I've read, if you can make it to sunrise, the demon will leave. There's a bunch of rules you need to follow in order to keep yourself safe. For example, every hour until sunrise, the demon will enter the place it was summoned to. The hell? I got until dawn? <laughs> Literally? 
It will travel down the nearest hallway in search of blood, specifically your blood. Its own rules prevent it from opening doors to search for you, so keep them closed. What room are you both in right now? The reception area. You need to keep that in mind, all right? When the demon arrives, make sure you're all in the same room as when the ritual started. If someone isn't, the demon will know. And once it knows that someone is where someone is, closing the door won't stop it. If you're ready, I can tell you what to expect once 10 o'clock hits. I ain't about to let no demon run Rush House over my house of healing. What? Rush Hole, something like that. I don't know. Just tell, what, tell, us, tell, us, <clears throat> just tell us what we need to do, honey. Okay, here's what's going to happen first. The demon places a lot of emphasis on windows for some reason, right? I'll try to use the power to open the windows itself. You, <clears throat> you're gonna need, you're gonna need, and I cannot stress this enough. You're gonna need to close all the windows before the hours is up. Leave one open, the demon gets stronger. You won't get that, all right? You don't want that, all right? If you finish with everything you need to do before the hours up, try starting, just try staring at the. Oh my God, I cannot read. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sure it will. <clears throat> I'm sure it will help pass the extra time safer. I'm sure it will help pass the extra time faster. I'll stay on the line just in case you need me to repeat something. Good luck and please be careful. All right, so let's go check on these patients. Okay, you gotta make sure everybody's in their room. Make sure all the windows are shut. You good? I tired on work. Sleep for a minute, then hand caught. You fell asleep at work and that's how your hand got like that? Yes. Oh, you poor thing. At least try to get some rest while you're here, alright? Timmy sits happily humming to herself. Alright, that window's closed. And y'all's are closed. I know. The kids, Lane. Did she even think about them? The little hands are probably worried sick by now. I know. I owe them an apology for making them worry. And I owe you one too. <laughs> you two are right in here? Yeah, we're fine. Uh-huh. Well, holler if you need something now. Well, I hope I'll make it in time. Oh, speak of the devil. Close that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I checked in there because I was sure what to miss it, too. All right, let's go back into the room and let's stay safe. Hopefully nobody's in there. All right, let's close our door. And it says, stare at the clock, right? All right. The time was 11 p.m. Didn't it say 10? I don't know. All the windows have been closed, and then, it's, then it arrived. The hell? What y'all trying to say? Oh. <laughs> we good, right? We good? Oh, I thought I'm gonna open my door and get me. <laughs> but we did it. Good job. Here's what's going to happen next. There's something about the demon's power that resonates the TV signals, right? It will try to turn on the TV and minutes to gain access to. It never knows something besides static. Once it takes control, but that's not, but that's still bad. If it happens, just turn the TV off, then kick it out for a while. For a while. But don't leave any TV that it's controlling on, alright? It won't end well. But don't leave any TV that it's controlling on, alright? It won't end well. Doctor, you look tired. That's because I am. Then let me handle things this hour. You should rest. Oh boy, now we gotta look out for TV. What the hell is she doing in there? Girl, get back to your room. Lord have mercy. Hello? Ma'am, this is the waiting room. Strange things are happening tonight, and I need you to get back into your room, please. <laughs> My bad. I'll go back now. Yeah, you better. I ain't finna die because of you. How you feeling, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Excellent. That's exactly where you want. That's exactly what we want to hear. Turn the TV off. Close that window, ma'am. You're gonna grab your cheeks. The job, Lane. Now you're probably gonna have to miss work. Who knows how they'll react? Heck. And I know I'm missing work. I know. We'll be fine. Watch. Come morning, I'm gonna walk out of here good as new. Oh, I sure hope so. Alright, windows closed, TV's off. Check. I gotta check all these rooms. Close our door, because I ain't trying to get ate up. Hold on, get in the room, man. Sir, let's see. It was 12 a.m. Now the windows have been closed. 
Now the television had been turned off, and then it arrived. All right, I think I got it down pat. Let's just see. Turn back around, sir. Thank you. All right, we're doing good so far. Hope we can keep this up. Here's what's going to happen this time. You'd be surprised how much the demon's power resonates with electronics. It can gain access into phone lines and try to gain power too. If you notice the phone continuously ringing, then that's exactly what's going to what it's trying to do. All right? Now, this is going to sound crazy, but you need to pick up the phone and listen. Pay attention because this part is important. If you hear anything, and I mean anything, on the other end, you gotta recite our mantra. Your presence is not welcome here. You must depart immediately. Don't worry, you remember it when the time has come. I hope I do. But if there's silence on the other end of the phone, then keep quiet. Silence means it hasn't properly figured out the phone location yet. Location yet. You don't want to give it any clues, all right? Man, it's tired anymore. You can let me handle things this time. Sounds good to me, Doctor. You take this hour, and I'll take the next. Everything good in here? Here. Best rest in a long time. Okay, check the phone. All right. Lord have mercy. <gasps> it's noon already? That's midnight, darling. Oh. <laughs> you listen closely. You don't hear anything from the side of the phone. Say nothing. You insist that the presence on the other end of the phone has departed. I think my back is beginning to start hurting again. Guess that mess I, er I had earlier is worn off or something. All right, let's go get him some medicine. All right, here's your medicine. Here, it's time for some more pain meds. Just in time, my back was hurting, just acting up again. Whew. Everything good in here? Nope, window's open. I bet somebody's gonna be on the other side of that window too. I can already tell. <laughs> the time was 1 a.m. Oh, oh, shit. All the television. Been... <laughs> shit. And the phones have been answered correctly. And then it arrived. Oh, no. <laughs> no. I'm in the hole. Good God Almighty. Oh! <gasps> it's my fault. The doctor hasn't arrived yet. Oh, no. This is a good, ma'am. I can't handle this on my own. Try to stay calm, please. You're not alone. I'm still here with you. You can do it. Just stay calm and I'll guide you through the rest, okay? The demon will try to draw more power from any life that can gain access to, all right? You don't know it's inside a room trying to siphon power when the lights start flickering. When it happens, what you'll need to do is enter the room, close the door, shut your eyes for a few seconds. You really need to need, you're really going to need to use the space to inside your mind to focus for the work. You know it's work when the lights start flickering. And make sure you do it right, okay? If you don't, then... Jesus Christ! I lost! I'm not gonna get a good ending! Close that. Madam, I bought you some scheduled pain medication. Yes. Good. Oh, I can't believe I messed that up. I'm always gonna mess something up. Jesus Christ. It got her right hit. Oh, shit. Hold on. The door. Now, how are... Stay away from me, demon. All right, we good. Where's she at? Oh, Lord, she on her room, y'all. She on the loose. She on the prop. Oh, shit. Turn that TV off. You listen closely. Uh-oh. Recite the mantra. You can sense the presence in the other, uh, other end of the phone has departed. Close the window. Oh, there she go. Hey, there's some lady in the mirror looking at me. I believe that's you, ma'am. Strange things are happening tonight, and I need you to go back into your room, please. Hmm? My bad. I'll go back now. Everything good? We good? I hope I ain't forget nothing. The time was 2 a.m. All the windows have been closed, all the televisions have been turned off, and none of the lights have been left on flickering. And all the phones have been answered correctly. And then it arrived. Jesus. I'm sorry, Dr. Edna. Ed Edda. Edda. I'm sorry. Hopefully we get this. All right, good. We did good. There's one final thing this demon is gonna try. Ritualistic candles. It has the power to manifest them inside this area of influence. It's vital and very, very important that if you see one, extinguish it. If you let it keep burning, the demon will be able to draw power from it. 
It won't try anything new after it gets to this part. So you don't have to worry about any more rules. Oh, thank God. Oh, and I almost forgot something. This part is important too. Whatever you do, make sure you do- Oh. Oh. Oh no. I'm scared. Hello? Oh, sh oh she sleep after she was dead. Turn that off. Turn it off. Hello? Turn it off. Thank you. You good? Why you sleep like that? All right, she sleep. That's all that matters. Three A. Everything's quiet. It's so quiet. I mean, we ain't even seen the demon's face. That's the crazy part. Turn that off. Turn that off. I really can't believe I let that girl die. Oh shoot. Close it. Stay, stay away from me, demon. Stay away. It won't. It don't matter if I leave these open, right? Cause nobody in there. Oh, were you playing with her cheeks? Her ass is literally right there. Oh, I was in the wrong room. <laughs> you listen closely. You don't hear anything. Say nothing. You sense the presence on the other end is departed. All right, hurry up, because I ain't trying to be out here long. Y'all saw that, right? That thing was outside the window. Oh, shit, it's here. Oh, my God, close it. Please stop. Please stop messing with me. Oh, what the? I'm dead. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> this is the worst ending I'm gonna have. Oh, none of the lights have been left flickering. The phones have been answered correctly. All the candles have been extinguished. And then it arrived. Shit. These people are gonna be in here. They're gonna be dead. I'm sorry. No one could make sense of it. Oh, shit. Both Dr. Edda and Nurse Morton have suddenly disappeared without a trace. No signs of a struggle, no signs of forced entry, and absolutely no clues as to where they'd gone. They had both just simply vanished. Without, without Dr. Edda to run things, the hospital that had faithfully served the community for decades stood abandoned. Now una unable to get medical help that they so heavily relied on, the town suffered. But no one has suffered as much as Morton's now orphan daughter. He had a daughter? <gasps> oh no, I feel so bad. Oh Jesus. She is now alone in a completely unfamiliar town with no idea what could happen to her father. The truth, however, was only known by Hannah. She feared that might happen should Vermander ever figure out her involvement in trying to prevent his plan. What she wanted more than anything was to pack up and leave town and go somewhere very far away. Somewhere she could be safe. But her e her meager salary was a sal as a secretary didn't allow for this. The fuck was that? So she continued on working for someone she both feared and despised, too afraid of what he may do should she try to quit. With Hannah's silence, no one could ever tie the disappearance back to anyone or anything. And J.P. Vermeer got, got away without consequence. Untold amounts of fortune had been brought upon the small town. But in the end, Vermeer got to keep his one extra percent. And that's all that mattered. Oh, no. I got the worst ending? Oh, my God. I think I messed up again. I think I forgot to give the doctor, uh, the patient her medicine. Now she's standing up. Damn it. Oh, now the patients are getting it, too. <laughs> now the patients are getting killed. Oh my god. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a bad end. I can just tell. I'm not gonna get that good in the eye. Oh my god. Jane Doe has done all she could to hide her injury from others. Her resonating her reasoning was driven by the knowledge that even a simple hospital visit could result in her never seeing her family again. Unfortunately for her, this fear was realized by entirely different means. Oh jeez. Oh, I'm messing up so bad. Now the patients are getting killed. All right, so it was basically the same information earlier that I mentioned earlier about the whole don't let this happen again, basically. So I'm going to see what happens if I let all the patients die. <laughs> all right, so y'all are good. I'm going to leave that door open, though. Girl, get out. This is where all the... This is where they kept all that shredded cheese. 
I was told there was something, nothing in the refrigerator, so probably not. For now, though, I need you to get back into your room, please. <laughs> My bad. I'll go back now. It was 2 a.m. All the windows have been closed, all the TV has been turned off, and the lights been left flickering, all the phones have been answered correctly, and then it arrived. All right. I already got Jane Doe. Let's see if he'll get the uh, lame boy, I think. I'm doing this on purpose. I already got a bad ending, the worst ending. I want to get a bad ending. Oh, shoot. Oof! They didn't even react. They just sat there. Just sat, they just sat there and took it. On the day of his accident, Lang Boy's mind was not on the potential consequence of his action. Far from it, in fact. His mind was instead, instead on how happy his wife and children would be after he cooked their favorite dinner. A dinner he could not afford to make unless he used the money he saved by cleaning the gutters himself. The grandest intentions had now unintentionally doomed their entire family. What was it? <gasps> Y'all saw that? Ooh. Ooh. I gotta get out of here. No, no, I'm sorry, y'all. I gotta get out of here. I can't, I can't do this. All right, we're good. Close the door. Oh, my God. Turn the TV off. Let's see. The time was 3 a.m. All the windows have been closed. All the windows have been turned off. All the lights have been stopped flickering. The lights have been answered correctly. All the candles have been extinguished. And then it arrived. Good Lord. Now it's going to get all the patience. Let's see what happens. Is he even going to get her? Oh, okay. It did. And she, they got her in her sleep. <laughs> Damn. Who sleeps like that anyway? Under normal circumstances, Tammy Giles or Giggles, who was known as an awkward and shy person, she hadn't wanted to visit the hospital. No, quite the opposite. It was only when her tooth pain became unbearable that she finally made up her mind to have it pulled. A decision that would ultimately be one of her last. Oh, shoot. Oh, everybody's dead. Wait. What happened? Oh, we, got, we still gotta do it? Start the mantra. Stay back, demon. Go to the door. I mean, there ain't really much we can do now that everybody's gone except for the doctor and me. It's 4 a.m. Lights, doors, windows have been closed, TV's turned off, none of the lights have been flickering, or the phone's been answered correctly, or the candles have been extinguished, and then it arrived. Let's see. They probably only get one of us, actually. <laughs> Let's see. Yep. Oh, we're gonna get him first. Damn, you're gonna have an orphan child. All right, let's see. This is the bad ending. I should say this is like the worst. Everybody's gone. The windows have been closed. The television's been turned off. The lights have been left flickering. All the phones have been answered correctly. Now the candles have been extinguished. The sun began to rise upon our little town, and the demon could no longer stay in the world much longer. It had already fulfilled this part of the Vermander Pack, so it departed from this world back from whence it came. Dr. Edda had to manage to survive. She was finally safe. <laughs> she was good, I guess, as long as she was safe. That's all that mattered to her. <laughs> oh, Lord. However, an investigation into the four different disappearances that happened that night was launched. An, in an, invest in inv <clears throat> an investigation that was comp compromised by Vermander's influence. Despite her innocence and lack of evidence, Dr. Edna was charged and convicted in connection with the disappearance. Oh, no way. Without her being present to run things, the hospital had that that had faithfully served the community for decades now stood abandoned, unable to get medical help that they heavily relied on. The town suffered. The only older person who knew the truth left was Hannah. But as soon as she, but she but soon she too had suddenly disappeared. And upon searching her home, the only thing found was a strange lit candle. In the end, JP Vermin had got got to keep his extra one percent and that's all that mattered damn she was charged well that makes sense she was the last one in there man right now all i just want to get is a good ending that is it once i'm done with that then we good oh god yeah so all this all the way over because i really do want to get a good ending time was 11 p.m the door was closed okay. all right
the hell? All right, that was good. Stage one is complete. I just gotta be clear on making sure they get their medication. That's what, that's what I'm struggling at. Everything else is fine, but as far as giving them, giving them their scheduled medicine, that's what's messing me up. Okay, your room. Is there is where to keep the shredded cheese? I was told there's nothing in the refrigerator, so keep, so probably not. For now, though, I need you to get back into your room, please. Mm -hmm. My bad. I'll go back. Okay, I brought you your scheduled pain medication. Yes, good. It's 2 a.m., all the windows have been closed, and the lights have been left flickering, and then it arrived. Please, thank you. I think we got it. Good. So now we gotta think about getting her. No. Boy, his mess. I keep looking over here because I wrote it down because I keep forgetting. The time was 1 a.m. The windows have been closed. All the televisions have been turned off. The lights have been left flickering and then it arrived. Okay. We good. We doing good so far. I just gotta remember to give him his medicine. I gotta think. Do I gotta give her her medicine every time too or no? I don't know. We're gonna find out. So that was good. Alright, let's go get that medication for old boy here. Yeah? Hopefully we'll have enough time to make sure he gets what he needs so we can help him progress. Okay. Just in time my back is starting to act up again. Whew. Now do I have to continuously give them medicine or is that it? The time was two AM, all the windows have been closed, all the television been turned off, and the lights been left flickering, the phones have been answered correctly. And then it arrived. Whew! We're doing good. I don't want to get my hopes up too fast. All right. We did good. Good job. How many more we got left? One? Two? <gasps> there it is again! The time was 3 a.m. All the windows have been closed, all the TVs have been turned off, and the lights have been flickering, and the phone's been answered correctly, and all the cameras have been extinguished. Then it arrived. Please don't let nothing happen. All right. I think we got it. This was the final one, too. Hope everything goes good. Hope we get justice and vermin to go to jail. The time was 4 a.m. All the windows have been closed. All the television has been turned off. And the lights have been flickering. The phone has been answered correctly. And all the cameras have been extinguished. Then it arrived. Whew. I can breathe again. <laughs> I'm so nervous because I've been, I keep getting somebody killed. I just want a good ending. Are we done yet? Please let us be done. It was 5 a.m. All the windows have been closed. All the television's been turned off. And the lights been flickering. And the phone's been answered correctly. And the account's been extinguished. The sun began to rise upon our little town. And the demon could not stay in this world much longer. However, in a direct violation of the vermin in the pack, no blood has been spilled that night. Whew! The most important part of the pact had now been fulfilled, which meant that the agreement was now null and void. After generations of being enslaved to the Van Mernder family, the demon was finally free. And though we did not have much time left, it knew exactly how it wished to spend its final moments. I bet he's going to be digging up in Van Mernder's ass right now. I bet. I bet. Watch. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's going to tear that ass up. Shit. Had me running up and down this hallway for a damn 1%. This room empty as hell. Hannah, what in the world are you doing back here this early? Hannah? Yep, there it is. Mm hmm. Yep. Oh, it's you. Don't you have some work to be doing? What do you want? Why are you looking at me like that? Don't you go forgetting that you work for me, mister. Uh oh. I command you to get out of here. Why don't you listen to me, you stupid? <laughs> The angry howls of the demon echoed throughout the town that morning. And then the estate felt deathly quiet. As it turned out, Hannah hadn't left the Vermin estate that previous night. Oh, don't tell me she died. She had been far too tired to return home after feeding instructions through the phone that night. Instead, she fell asleep in one of the, ver uh, in one of the manor's empty rooms. 
She was wakened by the awful noises emitting from upstairs. Hannah climbed the stairs and quickly made her way over to the office. Inside, there lies J.P. Vermin. Is he dead? Beaten, unmoving, and absolutely mangled. Oh, good God. But against all odds, he was still alive? Hannah had a choice to make. A large part of her wanted to simply leave him there to give him the same disrespect and disregard that he showed to the others. She turned to leave. But deep down, she knew that this wasn't the right thing to do. As bad as he was, she could not stoop to his level. So instead, she called for help. She better than me. I would have left him there. <laughs> look, I look at him. At the same hospital, he tried to... You know what? In an ironic turn of events, J.P. Vermeer's life was saved by the very same hospital that he tried to rid himself of. See what I'm talking about? Despite their rightful and justified anger at that man, Dr. Edda and Nurse Morton treated him no different than any other patient. And he was soon to be on a road to a full recovery. Oh, I can't read. Dang it. During, during his stay in the hospital, he was given a room near the front. Day after day, he watched the patients as they came and went. He watched that the hospital's only doctor and sole nurse did their best to keep every person there. Keep the did their best to help every person that arrived. Jesus. And as he watched, he realized something. Those confusing numbers on a little piece of paper actually meant something. Those numbers represented actual people, people with lives and emotions. Don't tell me how to change a heart. People that just wanted to get help, the help they deserved. It took a near-death experience at the hands of an angry demon in an intensive stay in the hospital. But JP finally felt something that no Vermander had felt for a very long time. Remorse. And he vowed that he would do anything in his power to try to make amends. Mm. You can keep your apology because you tried to kill me by a demon? Are you all the way messed up? That's fucked up. However, due to the pact being broken, most of the wealth and power it granted was soon lost to crippling debt. Uh oh. No other, no other, with no other options, JP sold off his estate and assesses to pay his dues. And the last remaining bit of his fortune was donated to the hospital. Mm. As a sign of goodwill, Dr. Edda let him stay in for their vacant rooms until he could get back on his feet. He was currently working as a food delivery driver to make ends meet. He wasn't qualified for anything else. No, he does miss his money and his old lifestyle. In the end, he's just thankful to still be alive. Oh, the way they ran up on me like that, I'm like, hold on. Morton settled into his new job as a nurse just fine. Despite the rough first night, he grew to love the strange new town and its people. In the end, he knew that the decision to move here was the best one for both him and his daughter. Oh, now they tell me that he had a daughter. At first, when I first, when he first got killed... It told me then that he had a daughter. I didn't know he had a daughter as soon as he came in here. But I'm glad I know now. So stay good. Thank God. Edda is still the best and only doctor in town. She plans to use the donation money to rent, renovate the hospital so that they can provide the best care possible for years and years ahead. And now that they had an actual budget, she decided to hire an accountant. Was it Hannah? Hannah happily accepted the position as her old job was no longer available. I knew that's right. She glad to find she glad to finally have a boss that appreciates her hard work. And though it took a while, she did eventually forgive her man for all his misdeeds. The hospital had a bright future ahead of it and everyone was on the good terms. And that's all that mattered. Yeah. Good. Thank God. We did it. Well guys, that was the Vermander's curse. I got three stars, Is that good? That means I got three in this, right? I hope so. But yeah, let me know what y'all thought about this video down below in the comment section down below. I struggled a lot. This took over an hour long. I'm going to do a lot of editing. But thank you all for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe for my social media links down below. And if you haven't seen my latest video, I'll leave it down there for you to watch. And if you want to play this game for yourself, the full link will be down in the description box down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.